let's talk a little bit about the Supreme Court's decision not to take up any of the appeals which struck down gay marriage bans in a variety of states across the country, a hugely popular uh, decision among those who are connected to logic and reason and understand the Constitution, equal protection, and want equality. Not so popular a decision amongst people like Brian Fisher and other right wingers who are very, very anti gay. And Brian Fisher said that this ruling from the Supreme Court is the Roe v. Wade of sodomy. This is the Roe v. Wade of sodomy. According to Brian Fisher, if you go, if you are watching the program, you will notice that he seems to be visibly red, like his head is about to explode in this tirade, very angry with the Supreme Court. This is the de facto Roe v. Wade of sodomy based marriage. Let me repeat this inaction, this decision not to decide, this action not to act. This represents the de facto Roe v. Wade of sodomy based marriage. It's going to be virtually impossible now to stop this press and this push toward nationalizing, imposing on every state in the union marriage that is based on the infamous crime against nature. The Supreme Court today, they're trying to pretend we're not involved, we haven't settled anything. We haven't addressed this issue. It's not before us. We're not going to deal with it. We're not going to make a ruling on this. But they have made a ruling. Their decision today imposes sodomy-based marriage on 11 states that don't want it, that voted against it, that have constitutional and legal protections in their states against the recognition of sodomy-based marriage. And the Supreme Court said, we don't care. Just suck it up. You're going to have to deal with it. We're going to impose it on you by our refusal to act. That's the bottom line. Supreme Court cannot dodge responsibility here. They've made a decision themselves today. The Supreme Court just imposed same-sex marriage on 11 additional states. It's unconstitutional, unconstitutional, and completely, absolutely un-American. The whole thing about it's unconscionable, unconstitutional, and un-American that he says, well, it's not unconstitutional, right? We have equal protection clause. We know that the Supreme Court is under no obligation to take or hear cases that they don't want to take. Uh, we, we know that religion is being used to abridge people's equals protection. So that that would be a violation of the Constitution. But that's not exactly what Brian Fisher is talking about. As far as unconscionable, well, that depends on your particular conscience, right? Brian Fisher's conscience apparently has no problem at all with anti-gay discrimination and deep treating people as second class citizens based on who they were born attracted to. Some people do have a problem with that, Lewis. Their conscience does not like that. And as far as un-American, I mean, that's if that's really the issue, there are plenty of countries that have very well established legal anti-gay bigotry and discrimination. If he can move to those, if those countries would have him, Brian Fisher should explore maybe going to one of those. I'm sure they'd love to have him. <laughs> I love the constitutional argument. Um, I mean, Brian Fisher is essentially stating that he is more of a constitutional expert than all of those people on the Supreme Court. Um, the funny thing is he may be a, more of a constitutional expert than some of them, but <laughs> cer certainly not all of them. Based on what we heard from Judge Antonin Scalia over the last few days, I wouldn't doubt that there are people outside the Supreme Court that might know as much as he seems to about the Constitution. You're making a good point there. But the right is irate and Liberty Council and Family Research Council, they're all just absolutely flipping out.